Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 27th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida, but actually sort of virtually today teaching in Baltimore, our intrusion detection in depth class. In diaries today, we got a diary by Didier. Didier took a look at MicroStation files. MicroStation is CAD software. I actually wasn't familiar with it, but apparently just like AutoCAD files that Didier has looked at in the past, MicroStation CAD files may also include Visual Basic for application code. So they're using the same OLE format that of course uh, Didier's OLE dump uh, tool will gladly analyze and uh, Didier now extended the tool to work also with the .dgn and nvba files that MicroStation uses. At this point, uh, no need to panic. There is, as far as Didier is aware, no malware being distributed with these files, but by getting his tool ready and showing how to use it with these files, well, if you run into anything suspicious, please let Didier know. And then probably the big event today was that Apple updated literally everything. iOS, iPadOS, macOS, watchOS, as well as some standalone applications for Windows, Safari, and the like. But among all the bugs patched is one particular dangerous vulnerability that apparently is already being exploited in the wild. This vulnerability does bypass uh, protections that Apple has put in place in order uh, to prevent users from launching untrusted or malicious code. There are really uh, two different uh, technologies that are at play here. First of all, file quarantine. Whenever you download a file from a website and then try to execute it, if it's an executable, there is a special attribute that's being set that will alert you that what you're about to launch was downloaded from an untrusted website. Gatekeeper, which checks signatures, and then also, of course, most more recently, notarization, which does perform additional checks before digitally signing a particular executable. Amazingly, the actual uh, bypass of all of these different technologies turns out to be relatively straightforward. If you ever looked at a macOS application, uh, you probably noticed it's a directory, sometimes referred to as a bundle, that uh, then includes various uh, directories, including an info.plist file that includes additional data about the application, like for example, what is the actual executable. But turns out that this info.plist file is actually optional. And part of the bypass here is not to have an info.plist file in the directory representing your application. Secondly, uh, this particular bypass only works if the application itself is a script. So it's uh, not actually a compiled binary, but uh, some type of Python script or similar because uh, actual binaries are checked separately. So what's happening here is if you have a script based application, if you don't have the info.plist file, then uh, the logic in macOS does not recognize this particular application as a bundle. And as a result, all these checks will not be performed and it will be opened pretty much like any static file, let's say a PDF or something similar and any code in the script will be executed without warning. So this, of course, uh, does still require that the user downloads and executes the file, but that's exactly what these different technologies that Apple has introduced over the years are supposed to prevent. And a lot of malware that, of course, is going around for Apple, like all these fake Adobe installers and things like that, are essentially relying on exactly the user doing just that, uh, launching willingly a malicious application. 
And if you remember back in January, a coordinated effort by various law enforcement agencies around the world led to the takedown of the Emotet botnet and the associated infrastructure. As part of the takedown, law enforcement did push an update to Emotet infected systems triggering an uninstall on April 25th, which, well, was this weekend. As expected, the uninstall happened this weekend. I haven't heard about any problems caused by this uninstall, so Emotet now hopefully is a bit closer to dead than it was already. In the show notes, I'll link to an older write-up by Malwarebytes that sort of goes over the uninstall function and also confirms that it did get executed this weekend. And HashiCorp today announced that its code signing key was exposed due to the CodeCuff compromise. Remember CodeCuff, that's the code coverage company that made developer tools and that had its data compromised. But with that also, a lot of its customers were put at risk. And apparently HashiCorp is one of these customers, which of course kind of shows a little bit the snowball effect of the supply chain vulnerabilities or attacks where now we have HashiCorp, which in itself, of course, is a part of uh, the DevOps pipeline of uh, multiple companies as uh, they move uh, their containers and virtual machines live. The GPG private key uh, being exposed here uh, could be used uh, to then digitally sign uh, fake uh, copies of uh, the HashiCorp software that of course could include additional goodies. So if you're using any of the HashiCorp products, uh, be very careful as to which a particular software you trust and where you obtain it from. And well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and thanks to those who noticed the bad audio quality yesterday. Not 100% sure what caused this. I hope uh, this one will uh, better and please uh, let me know if uh, there are issues again uh, with the audio quality of this episode. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.